Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking all this excess silver scrap that I've had piling up over the years and we're going to turn it into a ring. And the goal here is to stay on a tight budget. So I'm not going to be using my $500 jewelry torch. I'm going to be using this $50 map gas torch. I'm not going to be using my $500 lathe. I'm just going to be using this simple jewelry roller. And then again, to keep things simple, I like to use a solder paste. It has flux within it, so you just no need to purchase flux. And then for shaping, I'm just going to be using my metal mandrel here and a rawhide mallet. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, the first step is going to be selecting some pieces to melt and then pouring them into a simple mold. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these just for now. We'll pull them out later when they're needed. And for molds, I like to keep things super simple. I've just got a little piece of plywood and some popsicle sticks. I'll show you what I do. Throw down a bead of glue, use some accelerator. You can use hot glue for this if you don't have super glue with accelerator. Tack that in place. The goal here is I just want a nice little rod of silver when we're done. All right, this should be good to go. I'll just pick out a few scraps that should work nicely for us. This little crucible, I forgot to mention this in the intro. You can get one of these for uh, really cheap just on Amazon. Just go ahead and put your metals in there. Now I'll use the map gas, heat this up, get it molten, and then we'll pour it into our mold. All right, and for melting, just make sure you're using a map gas torch. This will get to a much higher temperature than a butane or a propane torch will. It's enough to melt the silver. And just don't hold it upside down while you're going. You wanna hold it about like this. All right, ready to pour. Should just pop right out. Got ourselves a nice, perfect little stick of silver. Got this extra piece here. I'll just throw that back in my scraps, melt it down again later. All right, I've got my silver rod almost ready to go. I wanna put it through my roller to give it a dome profile here. But first I need to give it a more consistent elongated shape so it'll fit in there properly. So I'm just gonna set the roller to the proper height and I'll do that now. All right, I've got the piece to the dimensions I want. Now it's time to shape it using the dome section of the roller. All right, the shape is now perfect, exactly where we want it. I need to go ahead and flatten this out, but first I need to anneal it, because as you work the material and squish it, it hardens, and over time it's going to develop cracks. So I've done this about four or five times along the way. It's really simple, just heat it up to the point where it's just barely glowing red hot, and then go ahead and quench it in water. All right, we've got our flat stock all ready to go here, nicely shaped. Now we need to cut it to the correct length for my ring. So to do that, I'm going to pull up my ring size chart. We'll have this linked in the description if you don't have one. But I want to do a size 10 and a half ring. So I need to go to the circumference. I'm going to use metric, so 63.1 millimeters. Now if you don't have calipers, you can use a ruler. I'm going to use my jewelry saw for this. If you just have a hacksaw, that works great too. If you've got a Dremel, you can use that as well. Again, just trying to use whatever materials we have and what tools we have to do this on a budget. So I'll just try to cut this nice and as straight as possible. We're ready to start forming this piece into a ring, so we'll get started on that. But first, I like to save my scraps so that we can do this again in the future. So I'll just set these aside. All the dust here, I'll sweep up. That's what's so great about this, is that uh, every time you do it, you get more scrap. So it's just kind of like a never ending fun project. All right, now it's time to shape this bad boy. So I've got a block of wood here, a four by four, as well as my ring mandrel. 
I'm gonna go ahead and start shaping it with a rawhide mallet. What I like to do is take just a pair of pliers. I have soft jaw pliers here, but because we're trying to do this on a budget, just get a regular pair. You don't need to buy a $15 pair of pliers just for this. Wrap some electric tape around this. All right, these are ready to go. Just hold this in place and just start forming it into a circle. All right, I've got a nice curve going to it so far. It is really tricky to film here on my workstation. Things are bouncing around and it's hard to hold things down. I'd rather be on the floor on the cement, but it's really hard to film there. So I'm struggling through it, but it's working okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just on the wood block, continue that curve. I don't wanna overdo it here. All right, things are looking really good. You'll notice at this point, there's a little bit of a warped oval shape to the ring. That's totally fine. All you should be worried about at this stage is just making sure that you've got a nice roundedness to the whole ring. You don't want any flat sections. So now I'm ready to focus on the joint. You'll notice it's not looking very good. I want them to meet together flat like this. Right now it's looking more like this. We don't want that gap in there. So what I need to do is I need to spread these back apart just a little bit and I'll go in with a hand file and file them to shape to be better. This is going to make the ring a little bit smaller than I wanted, but that's okay. I might just have to wear it on a different finger than I originally intended to. All right, now I've got the ring just how I want it. You can see that gap is a lot nicer. Those are matching up really great now. So it's time to go ahead and we're gonna solder this together. All right, to solder, instead of using a fire brick, this is just folded up tin foil. Again, we're trying to keep things cheap and simple. Got it set up on this wooden block. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply the solder paste just along the seam. All right, I've got my paste applied. I'm not using little solder chips or solder wire. That makes things so much easier. And again, I don't need flux because the flux is contained within the paste. So this makes things super quick and efficient and cheap. Um, and then to uh, melt the solder, I'm going to be using this butane torch. If you don't have one of these, you can use the map gas torch. It's just a little more tricky. You're gonna be very careful not to melt the silver. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. I'm not gonna put any heat directly on the solder. I'm gonna aim for the back of the ring. And as it starts to melt, maybe I'll get a little more heat up towards the front. But because silver conducts heat so well, uh, I don't need to really put so much heat blasted straight on the solder. Just kind of go in a circle, heat it up, nice and even. You can see that solder paste is staying in place pretty nice. Put a little bit more heat up front. Solder's almost there. All right, I gave this a couple minutes to cool down. It's looking great. I'm gonna go ahead and form this back into a perfect circular shape, and then we'll start sanding and polishing it. All right, it's nice and round. All that's left to do now is just sanding and polishing. So I'm going to do this by hand just to show that it's possible. If you have a Dremel or a lathe, that could really help speed it up. But I'm gonna start with 100 grit, and you use that to get rid of the solder joint, any uh, residue left over there. And I'm just gonna go through all these different grits. And then I will use my Dremel to do the final polish. You can polish by hand, it's just a lot harder and less effective. All right, that took a considerable amount of time to do by hand rather than on the lathe, but it looks really nice. I sanded it all the way up to 1200 grit. Now I'm going to take this buffing attachment for the Dremel, put a little bit of polish on it, and we'll get this thing shined up. 
you don't have a Dremel, you can do this by hand. Just get a little paper towel, rub it on there, but it's gonna take so long. Dremels you can get, just search Rotary Tool on Amazon. They're like 15 bucks, so I would highly recommend one if you don't have one. All right, here it is finished. Check that out, that's a really nice shine, especially for all being done by hand. Look at that, you'd think this was done on a lathe. Perfectly round, fits really nicely right on my ring finger, so really happy about that. And as you guys know, silver develops a nice patina over time, so what you can do is you can just polish it, it you know, it only takes a few seconds, you can keep that shine up, or you can encourage that patina. In fact, if you want to force that patina and you want to develop one right away, you can use a chemical called liver of sulfur, and I'm gonna show you guys just how to do that. All right, I've got a cup of hot water here, just a little bit in the bottom, and then a cup of baking soda mixed with water. That'll neutralize the liver of sulfur. Now open this up. Go ahead and add a little bit. You don't need too much. And if you find that it's not dark enough on your ring, just add a little bit more and do it again. All right, now I've got the ring here. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a quick wash down it's alcohol on a paper towel. That gets any grease off of it. That's important because you won't have an even consistent finish if you don't do that. Okay, now we'll just dunk it in. We'll give it a few minutes. We'll check on it in a sec. All right, it's nice and dark. Let's check this out. All right, you can see we've got a nice, dark, even, consistent finish on there. I'm gonna take a little bit of steel wool and I'm gonna distress it, make it look a little bit more natural. All right, after a few minutes with the steel wool, check this out. That's exactly the finish I was going for. Just a little bit uneven, dark everywhere. Just looks like an antique ring. It's a hundred years old. Love that look. And what's so fun about this is you can just polish it again in literally just 30 seconds. And flip it around. So it's a lot of fun. Jewelry is a good time. Anyways, guys, that is the tutorial. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them down in the description. Uh, let me know if you would like another future tutorial where we try to take the budget and the number of tools needed even lower. There's a couple of things I can do that are quite extreme, but I think we might be able to make it happen. So let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.